This morning, I'm still processing what the orthopedic surgeon told me on Monday. Slow process for me because these are all new terms for me. Good morning, ladies. It's tea time. I will never diet again. Welcome to my home. I'm still processing what the orthopedic surgeon told me on Monday. I have what's called an ACL partial tear. He said it would be a grade one or two. And, and there's more, and a meniscus, a traumatized meniscus. Apparently I have two things going on with my knee. And it's not common to have two things going on at the same time with your knee. Most common injuries are the ACL, which is the anterior ligament, and I have a partial tear. The other is that my meniscus was also traumatized, and that's the cushion. If I have an MRI done, it could grade it more accurately, but he felt strongly that it was a one or two, and most probably a grade two tear or partial tear. Now that does not require surgery. And with either or those injuries, it takes a few months, it could take 12 to 16 weeks to heal. So it doesn't seem practical to me to go ahead and have an MRI done. I know that probably most people would go and do it because they just they just do it because it's recommended. But if you think about it, I I had an MRI done many years ago, at least 10, well, it's been a long time ago. I mean, it was probably 15 years ago. I had an MRI done for herniated discs and the x-ray showed what the MRI showed and the doctor, he knew by looking at me. So I don't see, the need for me to run out and have an MRI done when we already know that it's it's not a full, it doesn't appear to that it's a full tear. And even if it were a full tear and needs surgery, I can at least try to heal it. Some people go without, without surgery and they're able to function enough, well enough without it. And I'm willing to take that risk. I just need to get, get along and get myself into some physical therapy. That is my decision as of right now to do the resting of my leg, adding heat and cold. And because there's two, the two different injuries are, are need, have two different needs. So the ACL needs the hot packs to keep, try to get the blood circulating around in there. And the meniscus needs the cold. <laughs> It's quite quite an ordeal. I'm having uh, I'm having a time functioning, and it's it's kind of crazy. My husband said, "Do you think that I'd be used to just sitting in the chair?" <laughs> I've spent so much time sitting in the chair because I've had chronic fatigue for so long. But it's a different type of it's a different type of being laid up because you can't really you can't get up and walk around as easily, and you're throwing yourself off because. I'm trying to use walk with a cane, so I don't have one free hand, and and well, I only have one free hand to do things with, and the other hand I'm bracing myself, and you're throwing your body off, and I and I don't have herniated discs, but they're still slipping around. It's quite it's quite a challenge. My my little heart is is kind of sad. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't want to feel this way, but. It does. It feels a little sad. And, and my son, he's 30 and he tries to encourage me. He says, oh, mom, you won't be bored. Aren't you glad dad bought you that Nintendo Switch? <laughs> and, and honestly, I, I haven't played it that much. I haven't played it that much. And it's, it seems kind of silly in a way. I'm 51 and I do like to play it a little bit. I like to play Stardew Valley. That's my little game of choice. And we have, I like those little, those little games that it's kind of like playing house. I think that's why I like it. And I know it probably seems very silly to many people, but you know, some people have hobbies when they get older, they, they do puzzles or they do crossword puzzles or they play cards and it's just a pastime. It's just a little hobby. And that's the same, that's the way that I look at 
playing those little video games. I have to get myself into some physical therapy. I have a little therapeutic pool, swimming pool that I need to get into. So hopefully it's clean enough today and it's warm enough. We do have some solar water out there connected to the pool and I'm hoping to get some water therapy in. That's the only exercise I can do right now. I am I'm told no I'm told no exercise and <clears throat> have to keep the leg up, the knee up. I have to keep it, those hot packs going on it. And he was very impressed with how little inflammation and pain I have. It's, it's, the pain is minimal if I have pain. It, it reminds me of a very, very mild, mild stomach ache, but in my knee. Uh, it, so it's very, very minimal. And sometimes I have absolutely no pain. And I continue to take a teaspoon of turmeric in my cereal every day. I've taken maybe three or four of those Oso Sands. That's all I've taken in this whole, now tomorrow will be three weeks. I've done very well, I think. And I'm, I'm glad that my body is not full of inflammation. It used, I'm sure it used to be, but when I was heavier, but I've had the recent blood work and it showed I am very low inflammation in my body, which is is a wonder. It's because of switching my diet. Now I may switch myself over to more sweet potatoes because white potatoes are aggravating to those with arthritis. I was asking the surgeon about, do, do I have osteoarthritis? He says, it's normal, it's normal. <laughs> so he says it's normal for people over, over 40 or over 50 to have osteoarthritis. But that wasn't my question. I was asking him if he, if he considered that I had osteoarthritis, but he kept just saying, it's normal, don't worry, it's normal. I don't think it needs to be normal. I'm going to try to, to either stop it from progressing or, or reverse it if I can with this diet. I think it's a wonderful diet, but I will need to back off of my delicious white potatoes. The thing with the white potatoes is there are days I have no pain. That's what's confusing to me, is that there are days that I have no pain, and I notice that my the pain that I have in my body when I do have pain is weather-related, which, which is an indicator that it could be osteoarthritis or it could be the neuropathy. The cerebellum in the back of the head is our nerve control system, and I fell on the back of my head in a skiing accident when I was 18. And I believe that is the root cause of the nerve damage or the nerve problems that I have. And it causes pain. It's like phantom pain. You feel pain, but it, it's not, there's nothing wrong with you. So I'm able to apply peppermint essential oil and apply it to the back of my head where the cerebellum is at. And it works as an antispasmodic. It's wonderful. And all of a sudden the pain, the spasms will, will stop and the pain will stop. And it's important for me to stay relaxed so that it doesn't send those, uh, it doesn't flare up and cause me discomfort. Anyway, I came back from vacation and I've had been dealing with a bout of Giardia. Giardia is really, it's a, I, I can't stand it. I really just hate it. But Giardia is something that I contacted before moving to Mexico. It happened sometime after we traveled to Colombia for the first time. And it was either from traveling to Colombia or it's because we were mountain bike riding and there was a time that I drank from water from a stream and my husband said, you shouldn't have done that. There was deer poop nearby. So, these are things that I do, I do sabotage myself. I thought, oh, this is like great. There's, you know, fresh, fresh water. I'm going to drink from the stream and there was poop. So not a good idea. I ended up with Giardia for the first time. And how do you know if you have Giardia? Your stomach feels really weird. You can have bouts of diarrhea and bouts of normal stool. And this is the embar super embarrassing part, is that it gives you the most foul smelling gas. That usually typically happens with 
parasites is you start getting some really foul gas. That's like the nicest way to put it. Um, so I came back from this trip and we had had some, I had some splurges because my husband bought marshmallows so that they could have s'mores on vacation. And I was eating a couple of marshmallows. Now this is very strange, but um, I had a little white poop. I mean, a little white poop. And when I saw it, I thought this is, so right after I came back from vacation, a few days afterwards, I had this little white poop that appeared in my stool. And I thought, was it a marshmallow? But then of course a marshmallow is gonna dissolve so quick, that would never happen. And then I didn't think much about it until I did have the bout of diarrhea. Then my stools got normal again. I figured I had, you know, just picked up a little something from eating out on the beach or whatever. And then one night I got to thinking, wait a minute, why did I have that little white stool? So I Googled it and little white stools can be from liver problems, but I had blood work done. I know my liver is very healthy, thank the Lord. But it listed Giardia. And of course, then everything made sense. The diarrhea, the normal stool, the, the foul gas, and the little white stool, Giardia. And I started treating myself with the grapefruit seed extract and the Dr. Moore's herbs, and I still haven't fully recovered from it. And it's getting better, but it has to, it has to be like two or, you have to do it, I think, three times a day, and I'm still not doing those herbs three times a day. And you think that I would after all this time, but I just, I hate taking them too. I don't like the taste of it. It's, but I have to do it. I have to take it, I have to get rid of it. As far as my weight is going, I realized that I did drop a few pounds in the month of February. When I started in February 2nd, I think, and I weighed what, at 150 and I dropped down 147.2. So I lost a little bit of weight in February. And fortunately for me, I don't seem to drop weight from having parasites. That doesn't seem to ever be an issue for me. Some people lose weight because of that, but I love to eat, so that's never been an issue. <laughs> that's never been an issue. Dog got it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm dealing with it, and I'm tired of it, and it's. I'm trying not to be discouraged. I'm trying not to be discouraged, but I think I need to find somebody. To, I want. I think I'm ready to get some colostrum cap in capsule form and do colostrum therapy. I did bovine glandular therapy, which helped me. So I've, I'm gonna, that's, that's where I'm heading is to go ahead and try the colostrum therapy. I need to get someone to bring me down some capsules from the United States. And, and then I also found Dr. Kim Kipler. He has some probiotics that he recommends. I'm going to be looking at doing some therapy to get this gut thing going because I'm I'm tired of it knocking me down. It gets it gets old. All right. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. Leave your comments and questions below. If you haven't already like and subscribe. I appreciate it so much. It helps my my channel.